Welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, relax, and listen as we have a calm conversation about the mundane. I'm your host, Marco Timpano, and joining me is Amanda Barker. I am, and we're joining you from Montreal. That's right. This episode's coming a little later than I expected because we've sort of been on a road trip uh, to Quebec for work Mm -hmm. and for a little bit of fun. Yeah, a little bit of both, but mostly a work-related trip that we made fun. I That's think. true, That's yes. That's sort of more how I would term it. Yeah, we went to the eastern townships of uh, Quebec. And I learned, they've always been referred to as the eastern townships, and it's such a weird way to refer to anything. Not weird, but you don't hear that word a lot. Odd, yeah. Township, sure. like it's just not a word you hear a lot. At least not in Canada. I hear it often. You do? Tiny township. township oh, yeah, of you're right. Yeah, I hear it. Oh, okay. Well, then fair enough. But I guess I haven't. Sure. So, um, but that's what they're always referred to. And then I saw in French the word canton, and I'm pretty sure canton translated, at least in someone's dictionary, is township. I see. And that's what they're called. And they were really beautiful. It's the eastern side of, I don't know, it's not even really the eastern side of Quebec. It is kind of. It's sort of like the southeast corner of Quebec. Yeah, but when you think Quebec stretches all the way east to to New Brunswick, right? This is not anywhere near that. It does. That's why I'm saying it's the southeast corner. Because you go north to go to New Brunswick. I see, I see. Okay. Yeah. So um, sort of the southeast corner, very, very close to both Vermont and New Hampshire. That's right. And certainly, geographically speaking, looks very similar to both, having spent time in all three places now. Absolutely gorgeous. I can't tell you much about, you know, the history of the name of Eastern Townships, Mm. but all the towns that we drove through were just so beautiful. So beautiful. Really, really beautiful. There's. Let's see how many we can list. Magog was gorgeous. Yeah, you loved saying Magog. Uh, Waterville. Waterville? We, we went through Waterville, okay. yeah. We were in North Hatley. We were. That's where we stayed. And if you saw um, any of the videos I put up on Instagram, the stories. Mm-hmm. I was I was reporting from there. And there's more than one. Of course, that's North Hatley, but there's also, I believe it's St. Catherine de Hatley. That's right. Which is where our little outdoor theater was that we found. That's, you know, sitting abandoned. <laughs> sure, waiting waiting for waiting a new for season. Some, sure. Yeah. Uh, we went to Sherbrooke. Yeah, that's not really considered the Eastern Township. Oh, I guess it's I, not. Well, if anything, it's sort of the flagship city of the Eastern Townships, I okay. suppose. Um, it's a lovely little city. Uh, and then do you remember the name of the town that Bishops is in? Yes. Bishops University? Lenoxville. Yeah, Lenoxville. We were in Lenoxville. Yeah. So those are a few that we saw. There are more, obviously. Um, I would come back to explore more. Would you? I would come back to explore more and go to Vermont, I think. Oh, interesting. I would like to go to Vermont. And go down to Burlington. You're not far from Burlington there. I want to go to Stowe's, Vermont. Where? Stowe's. Why? Ski area. I don't know. It just Is I that where the Von Trapps ended up? Didn't they end up in Vermont? They did end up in Vermont. I guess Stowe's is a, a definitely a ski area of Vermont, but I've always wanted to go. I, I don't know. Really? Yeah. I've never even heard of it. Oh, you haven't? I went to a wedding in a Vermont ski area. Maybe that's where I was a kid, so I don't remember. Like I, I was a, a teen. I just remember growing up and hearing about Stowe's Vermont, Stowe's Vermont. Really? Yeah, and I've it being, never it heard being of it. sort of, you know, I I heard about it as much as I heard about skiing in Aspen, right? Oh, wow. So yeah, so I guess because it's on this side, this side, right? Mm. We're closer to that than we are Aspen. But mm-hmm. you know, when you think of ski places in North America, those are some of the places that come up, mm-hmm. at least to my mind. Like I think Whistler. Aspen, Stowe's. Uh, I'm trying to think of I mean, where I else. I mean, I grew up hearing about a place called Sugarloaf because that was in New Brunswick. Sugarloaf? <laughs> yeah. It's in New it's, Brunswick? It's in New Brunswick? Okay. Yeah, it's northern New Brunswick. It's where you go to ski. Okay. Uh, and then in Massachusetts, I guess people went to New Hampshire to ski. I don't really remember. Sure, of course. Yeah. It makes sense, right? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not a skier, so. We don't have great, great slopes in Ontario. I mean, great enough for me. We pretend we do. Um, you know what? I shouldn't say this. I'm not a skier, so maybe some skier can can uh, call my bluff on that. But 
the Blue Mountain area, and we ta- we've talked about we it have. a lot, and and um, we do talk about it a lot. And it's a beautiful area, and what they've done with it and to it is sure. is really quaint and lovely and sweet and fun. But when you've skied, but it's in, not. It's it's just a hill. <laughs> I skied in Aspen once, yeah. and that's all I ever need to ski. Ever you were done. Again, it was I was last done. Time you skied. And it will probably be the last time I ever ski. Skiing is wonderful. White powder, being warm in your ski clothes, and sashaying down a hill. Is it? And going up the, what do you call the thing that takes you up? The ski lift. Yeah. Can be really beautiful. And just the vistas that you see, mm-hmm. especially in Aspen. But I'm used to the hills here in Ontario. Well, we're not in Ontario right now. Remember? No, no, we're, we're in, in Quebec, Quebec, actually. And I'm not used to... And bigger Qu- hills. And Quebec has better better skiing than mm-hmm. Ontario, one could argue. Yeah. Um, but I'm not a skier like you. And I went what? to Aspen. Oh, I, I thought... The way you phrased that made it sound like, like you, like oh. as though I'm a great skier. For the record, I've said it already, but for the record, I, I've never skied, like literally never <laughs> downhill. I've cross country. Oh, you've never downhill skied? Never once. Oh, okay. No. Then I don't suggest starting with Aspen. <laughs> Because Aspen was intense in a way I didn't expect. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did it, and I'm glad I did it. Right. And it was beautiful. Mm-hmm. And the downtown Aspen is beautiful, as is, um, you know, most ski resort areas. Mm-hmm. Now realize that my aunt lives in the Alps. I have an aunt who lives in the Alps, and a lot of her nephews taught skiing on the Alps. And that's about all the English they knew was how to teach Ski ski English is what they knew. Oh, wow. Turn your ski, go left, snow plow, things like that, right? <laughs> snow plow. I don't, know if, I don't know if they call it snow plow, but we call it snow plow when you, when you try to slow down by yeah. pointing your ski tips oh, together. Okay. Did you know that? No. Yeah, so Once again, never downhill skied. I would love it if you played a downhill skier. Oh, my God, and, and I had was, to learn. Or you didn't even have to learn. You just had to be a professional downhill skier. I'll tell you, I always wanted to. But um, my sister uh, did something to her knee once oh. skiing, and it because I danced. Right. I just was so worried about at that age my my sure my knees and my ankles. Your dance career. Yeah, my my illustrious dance career. And then when I realized that I really wasn't going to become a dancer, I suppose I could have started. But at that point, I was in high school, and everybody. If you skied, you skied, and if you didn't, you didn't. I see. Right? So it, at that point, it was just, you kind of had already chosen your path. Fair. <laughs> but I'd love to start. Fair. But we did enjoy the drive mm-hmm. here. and oh, the drive so in, beautiful, in, yeah. in the eastern townships, which I didn't finish speaking about. We is, went on a ski tangent. Tangent. We um, went downhill. There was, there's a couple of hills here in the eastern townships where we were. And lakes and beautiful lakes. Oh my gosh, lakes. beautiful. Lac Magog. Lac Magog. The town's uh, named after the lake, I believe. Or the area, anyway. And it's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just like, I mean, November, probably a month ago, it would have been. <laughs> We've picked, a, but you know what's nice, Marco? So, yeah. okay, so we haven't, the foliage is now off the trees. Right. But it's almost like that last leaf falls and mm-hmm. boom they are embracing all things christmas yes all things holiday all things december cheer and joy yeah and so there's lights everywhere uh and we stayed at a very quaint in in there's no other word for it i mean it was quaint and, and beautiful and here's the thing our listeners like to hear about hotel stays for some reason i get a lot of response i, would. I do yeah. i know you do i you I love to hear about a hotel. Amanda will sometimes, I'll find her just looking at hotels, different hotels and things we like and don't like in hotels when right. we're looking for a place. Like you'll, you'll often yeah. just be looking. If well, there was a hotel magazine, let me ask you this. If there was a magazine yes. called Hotels, I yes. haven't even finished. Yes, I would. That just showed different hotels all over the world and, you know, the different features they have. I would love it, but. Okay. I don't always stay in hotels. It's true. In some countries, I don't look to hotels. I don't want to stay in a hotel. Okay, but when I say hotels, I mean hotels, inns, Airbnbs. I think there's an Airbnb magazine. 
Probably. I mean, wouldn't it be online? I mean, I like paper. I'm 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 a relic of the past because I enjoy opening a paper filled magazine. Nothing wrong with that. I don't enjoy scrolling on a tablet for it. I don't enjoy looking on my computer for it. I want to open a magazine. You like the tactile nature and the glossy pics. <laughs> yeah, those those glossy pics. Okay. Well, back <laughs> to our hotel in North Hatley. Yes, please. So we were looking for places to stay. And I think it was the name of the hotel and how quaint it looked, or the inn, that that settled it for us. And the name of it was? Auber- do, no, do you want me to do no, it? Go, go ahead. Auberge La Chocolatière. The Chocolate the cho- Auberge. Well, the Chocolate Inn. The Chocolate Inn, yes. Auberge is in. Yeah, the Chocolate Inn. And, uh, and we thought, well, we have to. So I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on, on the podcast, but I love chocolate. Chocolate for me is my weakness, one could say. Mm-hmm. I, I will say. Um, and so as soon as I saw that, I was like, how can I not stay at a chocolate inn? For those of you who haven't experienced this area of Quebec, let me say this, um, if this helps. For me, it felt like a mix of Vermont. If Vermont and Northern France had a baby, it would be this area. It is very French. Mm -hmm. It is very quaint. There are very old inns, buildings. We had our first night dinner in this stone restaurant that looked like it had been the you know the ale house right. since the 1600s right. for weary travelers mm-hmm. and probably had been i mean a lot of these buildings are that old so the nice thing about our hotel is that each room was named after a different type of chocolate and we were in the truffle room no, not just the truffle room oh the citrus truffle room it's a very specific type of truffle it's true now the theming kind of ended with the name it was not made <laughs> There's some chocolates on the pillow. Other There's than... some chocolates, and you could purchase chocolates in the hotel, in the inn lobby. Indeed, I don't want to make people hungry though. It's but, true. But I will say this: it had a free breakfast, which was out of this world. Amanda so got the same thing twice. We stayed there two days, and for breakfast, you had the same thing. When twice. life presents you with the perfect ham crepe, you don't ever need to say yes to anything else. And uh, we got to sit and have our breakfast by a roaring fire that the innkeeper put on. And the innkeeper was joking with the guests. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. He was like, I don't want to burn you. I have other clients I want to burn. And they were all laughing. Everyone was laughing. It was lovely. It was such a lovely place, lovely town. Um, I'm glad that Mm -hmm. I finally got to see this area of the world because I wanted to go to university where you ended up teaching. That's right, at Bishop's. At Bishop's University. And I came very, very close to choosing that school to do my degree. I didn't go there, but I, at that time... It was one of... It was one of four that I was looking at. Right. And uh, and then it was one of three I was looking at, and then it got bumped off the list. It was never on my list. No, it was oh, never, no, it was on, never on my list. But I, I got to... That's a lovely I'm very, school. I'm very grateful that I got to uh, teach a workshop there. Sorry, that's my chair. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the students and the staff that I encountered yeah. were wonderful. And the only staff I encountered was Dr. Linda Moore, but she's wonderful. And her, her class was exceptional. And her podcast, Getting it's Lit great. with Linda, is an exceptional podcast mm-hmm. into Canadian a viewpoint into Canadian literature. It's true. She's doing great things. Then we drove to from the Eastern Townships. We drove to Montreal, where we find ourselves in a more modern, funky hotel. This was very deliberate. Once we found the place we wanted to stay, Auberge Le Chocolatier, um, we decided that uh, we wanted something a little more Montreal, a little more. Well, there's lots of versions of Montreal, I sure. suppose. But this is a very funky, upscale, contemporary, sleek, contemporary. Yes, you know, in this room that we're sitting now, there's a a beam made of cement, which is not my favorite. I'm not a cement aesthetic type person. No, you don't like 
You don't like a good slab of cement in I your don't. bedroom. I don't. <laughs> it just doesn't do it for me. I could, but I can appreciate how someone likes this kind of industrial feel mm-hmm. and design. And, and it's a nice change from you know a, a quaint in from mm. the whenever that was built. Yeah, eighteen hundreds probably or something. Amanda destroyed the coffee machine this morning in this hotel. Yeah, I hope we don't get charged because I thought, well, as I pack and and here's something that I love to do in hotel rooms. I love to clean out my purse. It's true. I don't in a get hotel it. Room. But I, I I always leave you be when you're cleaning your purse. A hotel room provides. It's very loud. Sorry, it's my chair. I'm gonna try to sit. Properly, but I'm yeah. wearing, I'm in the same chair, not wearing, I'm sitting in the same chair, and I notice mine doesn't make that noise. Well, you're more still than I am. I'm noticing your hand is on the chair is what's making that noise, not the chair itself. Okay. Anyway, um, I thought, wouldn't it be nice while I clean my purse to have a nice cup of coffee? Can I just say these chairs are very funky, and so they're not as functional as one would want. They're for funk a, over functional. They're funk over funk, <laughs> and we're on a, we're on a table that's very modernist in design yeah it is modern i would yeah i would say maybe not even postmodern, but no. modern and if you stand up you'll hit your head on this low hanging but at least it provides some light true okay back to your purse yes back to the uh, the importance of cleaning a purse in a hotel room a hotel room allows you a blank slate where you can take everything out and really truly see it for what it is and not look around your bedroom or your kitchen or wherever you would normally clean one's bag or purse but actually just see it on the table or on the bed wherever you want to do it and it just allows you a chance to really go through all those items go through all those receipts and group them which is something I do especially when it's a trip where uh you know it's business related sure and uh which so many trips we take are, but also it allows you to just take everything out, the hand sanitizers, the masks, the pens, the glasses, the lip balms. Um, Paper receipts. The gloves. Um, in my case, frame glasses without glass in them because I keep the frames for acting purposes. What else is in there? Brushes. I tend. I had four different brushes I brought with me. See, but it's not. It, which, but I don't realize I have all that, and I just throw another one in my purse, and then I don't think I have any when there's five right. in my purse. And so it allows me to go through all of those things, wipe them down, clean them out, take everything out, and then I like to shake all the sediment on the bottom, either in the sink or in the bathtub or in the shower. So that I can see if there's some extra little earring, dime, um, you know, grommet, grommet, something that go, what is this? Right. In a really neutral place that I don't mind messing up a little bit. Sure. And then I, you know, I try to clean it out a little bit. I don't leave the entire, in my case, I had an entire shortbread cookie that had turned into a fine white powder at the bottom of my purse. I'm not even ashamed to say, because when we went to Paris, Ontario, there were three lovely ladies dressed up as witches. This was now a month ago. It was Halloween. And they handed these adorable shortbread cookies out that looked like fingers. Yeah, there, was, there were three ladies of the town, or older ladies. It sounds like old-timey. Who were dressed as sex workers, which, not they, sex, were, they, were, which they were definitely not. No, well, they could have been, but they just didn't seem. <laughs> I would love it if they were the sex workers of the town. They were in their late sixties, so yes, even better. They were so dressed. People as, in their late sixties have a lot of sex. Yes, yeah, certainly, and there's nothing wrong with that. But that's not what this podcast is about. <laughs> These ladies were walking around dressed as witches, greeting people in the town and handing cookies and chocolates. And the chocolates. cookies were shortbread. A lot of food in today's episode. Mm-hmm. We should put a warning. A out. disclaimer. Yeah. Um, they're shortbread with an almond piece that looked like a fingernail, so it looked like a big fat finger. And I thought, how tasty, but I'm not hungry right now. I'll throw it wrapped in a napkin in my purse and I'll have it on the road later. Well, I never did. Forgot about it. Disintegrated. And it disintegrated. Like it wasn't, there was no one chunk 
of left. cookie left. It was a fine white powder. If I was at the airport, I would have been pulled over for sure. So anyway, I had to get all the shortbread out of my purse and uh, and into where it sits right now on the bottom tiles of the shower. So I'll just do a little rinse of the shower and get it out. But now, but I I, I made a, a dollar fifty. Oh, that's from wonderful. all the quarters and dimes at the that's bottom so of my great. purse. So well, now use that for coffee. We're packing our bags. And while Amanda finishes packing, I'm going to put this episode up. And then we're going to go for bagels, Montreal-style bagels. Since we've talked about food, we might as well just continue. And then head back home. And there's a big debate in Montreal of which is the better bagel. There's two, Fairmont and St. Viator. And yes. we think we're on the... St. Viator. St. Viator. Um, My French is really bad I do bad want to go today. to that coffee shop, too, and get some good coffee. What coffee shop? Café Olympico. Okay. Yeah, we we'll do both. All right, there we'll we do go. that. That's, that's, and that's our trip, our work trip with a little bit of pleasure in it. We saw a good friend, and now we're heading back. Wish us luck. We have a long seven-hour drive ahead. No, it's only five from Montreal. Oh, really? It was seven to oh, Eastern Touch. Oh, because we Yeah, because now we're in oh, Montreal. Oh, well, that seems doable. That's well, totally doable. Great. We're going to listen to podcasts. We'll listen to audiobooks. Mm-hmm. We'll listen to some Christmas and holiday tunes. Yeah. And that'll be our trip. It's like we came in and it was fall. We left and it was Christmas. There you go. Well, where, whatever you are doing, we hope you have a good time doing it. Tell us about your inns, hotels, and places to stay. And until the next episode, you've been listening to The Insomnia Project. This episode was recorded from Montreal, Canada at Hotel Zero One, which is a modern, funky hotel. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. I'm Amanda Barker. And we hope you were able to listen and sleep. <laughs>